what is high ticket closing part two so in this one we are going to explain why when you're out there in the closing world it is also important for you to have a mentor i know i've mentioned some things about dan lock teaching the skill but let's pretend you went out alone and you knew nothing about closing you had no mindset you're about you said to yourself I want to go in high ticket sales, but I never want to spend the money, I want to scam any cars, and all this bullshit. And let's pretend you got to five years of frustration in doing outbound calls. Now, I was working with uh, Influencer at one point, so when I got near sales, that is when I smashed the glass ceiling. I couldn't get beyond it. Okay, I know it was like text blasting and we did the call, so it's like text blasting, then you get an appointment, so it does become an inbound. Um, and also just ringing a lot of people as well and just getting appointments, which about a couple of them did not close. and. Yeah, well, they closed, but they weren't qualified for a credit loan. And uh, a couple of ones, like I nearly had the sale and then crumbled at the sign-up form. So I'd literally been out in the real world again since, like, September to about the, uh, the end of last month. And uh, there were quite a few of my HTC brothers and sisters other high ticket closers who had been learning from Dan Locke himself and uh, I'm going to tell you a little story that when his father and his mother had a divorce because the father was um, having an affair and the mum was kind of all on her own he did send money over until he got made bankrupt so he guaranteed every single loan got screwed over. Dan said to himself, I am, I'm going to wipe those tears off my mother's face. I don't want to see her like this. So he, he made 13 businesses. And over the years, he literally failed. And um, at one point, he was ambushed over himself. So his family didn't really believe in him but his uncle invested because yeah he wanted to work hard for five years so imagine five years of not having a day off and just working and working and working away until you get somewhere so for where he is today he has paid the price he has paid the price for his success up in advance so now my question is, you got two choices here. Do you want to be going around doing outbound calls for an influencer for a few years and then not getting anywhere? Or do you want to be ringing the yellow pages and trying to get copywriting gigs and then not getting anywhere for another few years? Well, do you know how I would answer that? I would answer that as, well, no, I don't want that. So, you know what? I couldn't tolerate near sales. So I decided that enough is enough. I would rather get some more trading in there myself. And then I would go out there again. But I suppose, yeah, I just decided, you know what? I'll work on my YouTube channel. which I'm sure that is going to work for me at some point so the reason i'm making these videos is the illustration of paying the price in advance so i don't have to pay the price later and find out that i haven't paid enough haven't sacrificed enough haven't done enough so the reason i would say that it isn't how hard you ring those numbers. It's not how hard you train at sales or closing. But if you have the right mentor for you, in whatever thing you pursue, then it's going to work out. 
So the reason I'd say in high ticket closing, it's important to have a mentor rather than going out in the high ticket closing world and then finding you can't close a single sale for any partner because this could be easily done. You could easily find a way to go out in the real world and try and close some sales for other influencers who might not be very good. You know, they might just be starting out. They might have um, a load of prospects you have to call. They're like really cold leads. Um, for any of you that have a sales job, um, how many how many sales do you get? How many closes do you get per week? There's anyone who's doing this on their own, put in the comments down below and subscribe for more content so then I can show you what it is that you're missing out on. So let's pretend that you're doing a sales job and you don't close a sale. Maybe you're working from home and you're working with an influencer, but you haven't invested in a course to help you. You haven't invested in any training or you haven't got any people around you helping you. Literally what Dan had, or we call our Sifu, is he literally was practicing in front of the mirror before he got on calls. So he was just very nervous and everything. Um, it was even when he's working with Alan Jacks. So that's his, his mentor. She found almost a few years later. And, um, you know, the thing I do admire him for was his persistence. So I'm going to say, I mean, in the high ticket closing world, if you're out there, a closer on your own and you're doing this kind of thing, how long can you keep going on and not getting a sale? Or just getting near sales. Because, I mean, let's pretend you go on the seven-week course and you put everything in. You turn up to the live classes. You do your practice. Then, what will happen for you, my friend? What will happen? Let's pretend you could scale up with all that experience and the money that you've made and hire more closers like I was talking about in the first video what if you could achieve that all in a short time with Dan Locke as your mentor I don't know about the others but I'm sure they have good programs I'm sure these programs could work out for some people but they might not work out for everybody the way they would like them to I mean if it's hey if it's Dan Locke you know and you put your work in this could work for you I mean, when you join, you join his mentorship program, then it is up to you to decide, okay, if this is going to be a mentee-mentorship relationship, there had better be some commitment. And let's pretend you procrastinate on your PS4. Like, I know I've done that a lot of times. I then know that I have to get out there and be productive. Yeah, I, I have to. I have to pay that price in advance at some point because we're either going to be paying it later in the real world or you're going to be paying it much sooner by training. Anyway, I'm going to leave you on this note and stay tuned for High Ticket Closer video part three. What is High Ticket Closing? Part three. This is What is High Ticket Closing? Part two. Thank you.